Globally, sedimentosa copper represents the second largest source of copper ores behind copper porphyry deposits. Sedimentosa copper deposits typically have higher grade ores, consisting of calcocyte, that can produce a highly rich and more marketable concentrate than porphyry deposits. Some of the biggest and richest come from the rocks that formed during the Proterozoic period, the age of supergiants. One of the biggest sediment-hosted copper deposits is the Udakon deposit, located in Siberia. This Proterozoic period supergiant contains 2.7 billion tons at 0.97% copper and 11.9 grams per ton silver. In Canada, Saskatchewan is ranked by the Fraser Institute as being the top mining jurisdiction in Canada. While better known for wheat, potash, oil and uranium, Saskatchewan is also home to one of the world's largest and most poorly explored Proterozoic sediment basins. Transition Metals has staked what the Saskatchewan government has highlighted as one of the top undeveloped copper projects in the country and has developed targets and a methodology to move this project forward. From 2012 to 2014, Transition Metals conducted a series of extensive exploration programs. Geological mapping outlined the geology and structures. Rock sampling over 20 surface showings returning grabs of 0.34 to 9.35% copper and 0.7 to 61.7 grams per ton silver. 700 kilometers of airborne geophysical surveys produced important VTEM, MAG and EM data over the entire property. When historical IP survey data was added to the database, important geophysical signatures began to appear. Magnetic halos define margins of alteration. Copper is chargeable or conductive. And the best copper zones typically located on edges of the mag highs. The company has focused its targeting efforts at two zones, Janus and Phelps Janssen, and considers these two areas advanced to begin establishing mineral resources targeting well-defined multi-parameter anomalies. Previous drilling on the Phelps Janssen zones reported 7 meters at 0.87% copper and 2.89 grams per ton silver. JLO338 returns 17.83 meters at 0.81% copper and 3.26 grams per ton silver. Approximately 2 kilometers to the north of the Phelps Janssen zones, drilling on the Janus Lake zones returned 39.2 meters of 0.54% copper. Drill hole PL9311 intercepted 33 meters of 0.77% copper, including 22 meters of 0.98% copper. The mineralization intersected by drilling at these zones remains open for expansion at surface, along strike, and at shallow depths. Company geologists think that these two areas have geological potential to host between 10 to 30 million tons of material, grading at 0.5 to 1.0 percent copper, within the first 100 meters from surface. To evaluate this hypothesis, a two-phase drill program consisting of 7,000 meters of diamond drilling in 50 holes is estimated to cost approximately two million dollars. If this program is successful, the company feels confident that this would justify expanding the scope of exploration activities to quickly and efficiently work towards establishing a threshold economic resource by expansions of Janus and Phelps Janssen and by investigating some of the many other surface exposures of copper mineralization on the property with defined drill targets. As a project generator, Transition Metals is currently selling interest in this project to a funding partner to explore and advance its Janus Lake project.